Hello, I'm Ty Mason of the DiabetesCouncil.com, researcher, writer, and I have type 2 diabetes. Today I want to talk to you about the differences between pre-diabetes, type 1, and type 2. After you watch the video today, I do invite you to check out the description box for my new ebook. This is one of the most comprehensive diabetes meal planning book you can find anywhere. It contains diabetes friendly meals and recipes, recipes for different goals such as 800 or 1800 calorie per day meal plans, diabetes meal planning tips and tricks. There are also tons and tons of diabetes friendly recipes for everyone. We hear the term diabetes and automatically we think we know what it is, right? Well, those of us with diabetes probably do know that there are two or maybe three types, depending on how you want to classify it. Some will call pre-diabetes a form of diabetes, and I guess that is true, kind of like preschool is kind of like school. Then there are type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And don't forget about gestational diabetes. We'll talk briefly about that one at the end. In this video, I'll attempt to give you the similarities and differences in each as well as some possible causes. Diabetes affects approximately 30 million Americans today. That is nearly 10% of the population. Diabetes is a disorder of the endocrine system. With diabetes, blood sugar levels stay high because either the pancreas can no longer produce enough insulin or the cells of the body are resistant to insulin and the pancreas can't keep up. Either way, the glucose or sugar level in the bloodstream becomes too high and the body cannot properly function. In the U.S., about 79 million people over the age of 20 have blood glucose levels that are above the normal range, but not high enough to be classified as full-blown diabetes. This is called pre-diabetes. It's also known as impaired glucose tolerance. This type of diabetes is difficult to diagnose because most people with pre-diabetes usually have no symptoms but prediabetes is almost always present before a person develops type 2. Without symptomology, however, it's hard to diagnose because most people don't go see a doctor if they don't have any symptoms of a disease. Complications normally associated with diabetes, such as heart disease, can begin to develop even when a person has prediabetes. In general, people who have a fasting plasma blood glucose in the 100 to 125 range are defined as having impaired fasting glucose or prediabetes. Like many diseases, early detection can be very good. Talk to your doctor about testing for prediabetes. You may be able to even prevent type 2. Now, type 1 diabetes used to be called juvenile diabetes or insulin-dependent diabetes. Type 1 di diabetes occurs because the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas are actually destroyed by the immune system. Type 1 is actually considered an autoimmune disease. Its onset has nothing to do with diet or lifestyle. There is nothing you can do to prevent type 1, and at present, nothing you can do to get rid of it. Type 1 diabetes most commonly starts in people under the age of 20, but may occur at any age. According to the Mayo Clinic, the most common symptoms of type 1 are increased thirst, frequent urination, bedwetting in children who previously didn't wet the bed during the night, extreme hunger, unintended weight loss, irritability and other mood changes, fatigue and weakness, blurred vision, and in females, a vaginal yeast infection. There is no cure for type 1 and it cannot be reversed. To determine diabetes, a blood sample will be taken after an overnight fast. A fasting blood sugar level that is less than 100 is normal. Again, a fasting blood sugar level between 100 and 125, as we've discussed earlier, is pre-diabetes. If it's 126 or higher on two separate tests, you will have a diagnosis of diabetes. And if you're diagnosed with diabetes, the doctor may do other tests to distinguish between type 1 and type 2, since the two conditions often require different treatments. Now, according to WebMD, those with type 2 diabetes, the body continues to produce insulin, although insulin production by the body may significantly decrease over time. The pancreas produces not enough insulin, or the body is unable to recognize insulin and use it properly. When there isn't enough insulin in the body, or the insulin isn't used properly, glucose can't get to the body's cells to be used as energy. Then the glucose is, builds up in the blood. 
Now, this condition was once known as on adult onset or non-insulin dependent diabetes. Most common in adults, type 2 increasingly affects children as childhood obesity increases. Now, there's no cure for type 2 diabetes, but you may be able to manage the condition by eating well, exercising, maintaining a healthy weight. If diet and exercise aren't enough, then you will go on medication or insulin therapy. The symptoms for type 2 are basically the same as for type 1 with a few additions, slow healing sores or cuts, itching of the skin, normally in the groin area, recent weight gain, numbness or tingling in the hands or feet, and impotence or erectile dysfunction. Now a quick word about gestational diabetes. Hormone changes during pregnancy can affect insulin's ability to work properly. The condition called gestational diabetes occurs in about 4% of all pregnancies. Gestational diabetes is tested for during the pregnancy and is treated if present. Usually blood sugars return to normal after about six weeks of giving birth. I hope this has shed some light on the different types of diabetes. Don't forget to get my new ebook and please subscribe to our channel for many more videos like this one in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ty Mason.